Coming to you live at the Gamma Trade Show at the Peppermill Resort and Casino in Reno, Nevada, Twist Gaming! Now take it away, Matt! Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming. As usual, I'm Matt, and I'm coming to you here live from Gamma 2019 here in Reno, Nevada, bringing you all the board game coverage all week long. I am joined here with Keith from Thunderworks. Hey, guys. Keith, how you doing? Good. Things are good, man. Happy to be here. I mean, Reno is a <laughs> fun city, <laughs> it is. Uh, and I hope you're having a good Gamma so far. Yeah, it's been good. I uh, had some uh, issues with flights today, but uh, I pulled through. I hear through. a lot of people <laughs> yeah. had some flight issues, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. It so. all worked out, and here I am. So Fantastic. And uh, let's just jump right into it then. So you have brought us a game that uh, has got some nice hype to it <laughs> right now. Yeah, so um, I'm here to show Cartographers a role player tale. So this is... Um, you know, based in the world of role players. So role player is kind of my, uh, you know, my flagship title, and, and it's been doing really well, well for me. And um, this is the second game that's in the same kind of universe as role player. Uh, the first one was a game called uh, Lock Up, uh, which I ran a Kickstarter for last fall. And then this one um, is is uh, on pre-order on, on my website right now. And, and both of those two games will come out uh, in August of this year. So Fantastic. just in time for Gen Con. Awesome. So cartographers. Yeah. Making some maps, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're making okay. fantasy maps. So um, in this game, everyone uh, will get a, a sheet of paper that is their, uh, their map. And um, basically, w at the beginning of the game, you lay out um, four goals that are the queen's edicts. So the, the, the queen has, has sent out to go, go map the land, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's four of these scoring goals. And in the box, there's 16 of them. And you get kind of randomly uh, dealt four of them. And then um, over the course of each round, you will add uh, different different kind of Tetris-style shapes to your map uh, using different terrains, whether it be forests or villages or farms or, or what have you. And then at the end of the round, um, the at the end of the season, uh, we'll score two of the scoring conditions. So at the end of the first round, we'll score uh, A and B. Then the second round will be B and C, and then uh, C and D, and then uh, D and A for the final one. Um, so there's some things that, m that are unique about it, I think, that um, this is a flip and write game that has some player interaction, mm -hmm. which is somewhat uh, unusual. So um, as, as we flip these cards, it will show us. Here's an example. That's actually not a good example. Here's an example of a card that you might see. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to throw it over here so we can get an up close and personal yeah. shot of it. Yeah, yeah. So that one um, says when that card comes out, uh, gets flipped from the Explore deck, uh, it says it has the one in the upper right left hand corner that tells you that one time is passing. And we know by looking at the spring card, uh, once eight time is passed, then that'll trigger the end of the round. Okay. And when that card flips, that it says uh, you're going to draw the village terrain within one of those two shapes on your board. Um, and if you choose the smaller one, um, you also get a coin, which you indicate on the bottom of your sheet right here. Okay. Um, which will be worth a point at the end of each round, and that will kind of accumulate uh, over rounds. So these cards flip. You'll either have one terrain or you'll have two trains to choose from. So in this one, you've got two different trains to choose from, water or village, but it only has one shape. And you can flip and spin and turn these however you want um, to draw them on your map, and they don't have to be connected to, to one another. But you're keeping in mind the different scoring conditions. So like in this specific one here, uh, you can see the Borderlands is saying you're going to get six points for every row or column that you've, com that you've completely filled up. OK. Um, and then the, the B condition. Uh, that we have picked out um, says that you're going to get two points for every water space next to a mountain or one point for every farm space next to a mountain. Uh, the farm is the yellow one and the water one is obviously blue. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third one that we're looking at is that we picked out is the Sentinel Woods one. And so in that one, you're getting... Oh. <laughs> a little green screen there. Uh, I promise funny. these are green. It's <laughs> not transparent <laughs> cards. Um, it basically says that you will uh, you get a point for every tree that's on the outside of your map. Okay. Um, and then the, the final one that we're looking at is uh, the village scoring card. And this one says you get uh, eight points for every grouping of six village spaces or, or more. Um, so that's what that means. And then so each, each uh, round, we're going to flip cards from the top of this Explore deck. One of these um, bad guys, one of the ambush cards, will be dealt in uh, into the deck at the beginning of each round. And what, like, for example, uh, this one, the Bugbear Assault. I mean, it's a it's good th color choice there, <laughs> too, you know? Yeah, well, I'm a big purple fan. Um, what that means is that you take your map and you pass it clockwise to the next player, uh, is what the symbol on the left means. And, then, and on the right, that means you, write, you draw that symbol, uh, that, sorry, that shape, 
and then write the monster terrain inside of it, and then you pass your maps back. Oh, and at the this end is of the that round, player interaction you were talking right, about Right, right. At there. the end of the round, each space that's empty next to a monster space is with a negative point. So um, you're, you're kind of drawing monsters on your buddy's uh, maps while you're trying to meet the goals of the queen. Um, and then at the bottom of the sheet, you add up all your points. At the end of each round, you get a point for each coin. And uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. Very so cool. So what do you say we play a couple rounds and see how it goes? That yeah. sounds awesome. You're probably <laughs> going to beat me. But I have, well, a, I have one question here, <laughs> yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so for something like the fishing, fishing village sure. here, uh, I know you said that there's a choice of two terrains. Do you have to pick all of one yes. and then... Okay, so it would be either much. all of the villages or all of the water you in that it. straight line. Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, and then <laughs> so we'll... We'll shuffle in uh, the null uh, assault card. There's a couple other things that'll pop up, but we can get into those as they, as we run into them. But uh, tch -tch -tch. there's that card. I was missing one. So basically, you shuffle up the, the explore cards, and we flip the top one, and it says farmland. So that says we can draw this shape or this shape. Use drawing, filling in the farmlands terrain, and if you choose this one, then you also get a coin. Another. If, uh, piece of, uh, you know, another important piece is that there's these mountains on your sheet. Um, and then if you fill in the four sides of a mountain, then you've m you've mined it. So you get a coin for that as well. Ah. Um, so I'm also seeing uh, some of these ruins right. or column symbols <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, they are ruins, Cart. Those are ruins spaces. Oh, see, good so, guess. Uh, yeah, good guess. So when, uh, if a ruins, there are ruins cards in this deck, there's two of them. And mm -hmm. when it flips, then we flip another card, and then whatever shape you're drawing has to be on a ruins space. Oh. Um, so it kind of restricts where you can, where you can play. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, so you're supposed to like write your, the name of your cartographer on here, and like in the ribbon, you're supposed to write like the name of your land that you're exploring. Um, so you know, Twistville might be uh, the name of the land or whatever. Twistlandia. <laughs> yeah. There we go. And you can draw a, sim a symbol in the, in the crest if you want it for fun. Uh, it, it is uh, important to write something there so that when you're like busy passing your papers back, you know who it belongs to. You know whose is whose. Right. <coughs> um, so then we get this one. Uh, we're, we're drawing one of these two shapes uh, using that terrain. And if you draw that one, you get the coin. And one time has passed. All right. So it's just the diagonal lines across the, yeah, yeah, the square. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so... And y like if you're thinking about the scoring cards coming up, the Mages Valley says you're going to get one point for every um, farm next to a mountain. So you might want to do that, or you might want to save those spaces for the water, which are worth two points each. Um, I see. I'm taking you up on that mountainous <laughs> thing, so right. I'm gonna I'm gonna cover up yeah, some sure. of that mountain on the top. Yeah. So, and you can fill in uh, the ruin spaces even if, if a ruins card hasn't come out. So. Okay. Oh, there you go. Oh, uh, should I box around it? It's, or? it's a little cleaner, but you don't have to. Okay. Um, and then we both do the bigger shape, so neither of us got a coin. And then we're going to flip the next card. And the fishing village um, says, uh, we talked about this before, either mm -hmm. the village or the water, and it's a, a four like squa square line. Um, so the remember, if we get to, to the end here, we're looking for villages in, in sets of six or larger. Right. And then the water, if you're next to a mountain, then you're going to get points for those. Okay. Um, but also, if you can com complete a line or a row or a column, you're going to get points for those. So lots of stuff to keep in mind here. Very true. Okay, um, so. <coughs> I am going to draw. And this is, what, four in a row? And you can do it vertically as well as horizontally? Yeah, you can, or, you okay, can twist cool. it. And then it doesn't matter for this specific shape, but um, you can flip it kind of in your mind as well with your brain power. <laughs> cool. So three times has passed of the eight, and here's the, the Great River. So this is uh, one, another one time, and you can draw one of these two shapes, but it has to be water. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to put this one up on the overhead just yeah. because that shape's kind of complicated, <laughs> and upside down, I know I'm going to, I mean, there, are, there is no upside down, right, really. You can always but flip it, but um, that is true. We're going to do... Let's do this. I think that's a good idea. But, I mean, I'm not a professional cartographer, so... Well, maybe by the end you will be. <laughs> this is just, you know... One can only hope. Cartography 101. So... So I, I covered all four sides of, of a mountain, so I'm going to fill in the, the coin here, and then I'll fill in the coin here um, to indicate that... I always fill in the coin that's oh, on the mountain. Oh, and you get it mined. So that's right. Okay. So I, don't, so I don't forget that I already took it, <coughs> and I fill in this one. So that's going to be worth... Essentially four points, one, one point at the end of each round. Well, that's good. Four points okay. sounds good. Um, and the, the card is over there. Oh, so here's the Ruins card. Um, and that's going to indicate that we're going to flip another card. And now we have to draw this shape. Um, 
either forest or farm, but it has to be on top of her ruins. Okay. That complicates things a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Not too bad, though. So that's the diagonal lines. If and keep in mind, like a forest next to the wall is going to be a po are going to be points, uh, based on the Sentinel Wood card, and then farms next to mountains are going to be worth points as well. Right. So we'll just do this. Okay. Putting your drawing skills to the test, sir. I know. I mean, they're not good. I promise <laughs> you that. So there's my my little village that I, or my little town that I've got yeah. going right now. So cool. we'll see how it goes. So that's uh, <coughs> four, five, six, seven on this one. So this is the hinterland stream. Um, okay. So that one's a three by three. Yep. 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 Yeah. Putting some water into mine. So, and you know. Very quickly, everyone's maps start to you know, diverge, right? So everybody's right. maps are looking <coughs> very, very different. I mean, we have kind of a similar thing going on, but at the same time, very, very different. So I'm getting, like, the straight line thing going. I see you're trying to go for the... Did you complete a row? Oh, you did. Oh, geez, that's, you've played this before, haven't you? <laughs> six points right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then this will probably be the last one uh, for the round, so that's the Marshlands. Um, yeah. It's a... Oof. You can do forest or water. Okay. So. Sure, I'll do. It's not working out as I was hoping, but we'll just grab some trees along the edge for down the road. That'll be worth some points for me. <coughs> I'm living in, like, water world. <laughs> yeah. I have, a, I have a fair amount of water as well. So that triggers the end of the season. Okay. So because we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've hit that eight-point uh, limit for spring. So now we score. So in the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to, in the first box, is, it says a letter A. So you're triggering this one. Okay. If you finish any rows or columns, which I, I don't didn't. believe you did. No, I didn't. I'll take my six points. Oh. oh you can write a zero if you want. Oh, <laughs> I could. <laughs> you could. Um, and then B, that's for two points for every uh, water that's next to a mountain and one point for every farm that's next to a mountain. Okay. So I get two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve two, points for me. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, uh, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Looks good. Okay. No, that was better. And then one, uh, one point for every coin you have. I don't believe you finished anything. No, I don't have any um, coins. And then we didn't get any monsters that turn, which is fine. We get zero points for that. Oh, so that's how you're scoring it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I did it backwards. I see how so I'm supposed to do box it. Is the yep, first yep, rounds, yep. Right? Don't mind me. All right, so oh. zero coins and then zero monsters. <clears throat> so then I got I got 19 points for the 16 round, points. So a three point spread. So then you you sh for the next round you shuffle in another <coughs> uh, ambush card. So we didn't run into the it the first time, but now there's twice the chance that we're going to run into it. Oh, so for the second season we're only scoring B and C. That's correct. Oh, look so at that. So now we're looking at summer, and now we're worrying about these two. Um. Now we'll score A again at the at the end of the fourth round, and we're scoring B a second time. We scored it last time, and we'll score it this time. Interesting. If you're familiar with. Um, uh, there's a game called Isle of Sky that has a similar scoring mechanic. Okay. I have not played that one. It's a good one. Anyway. Oh, we got a raid or an ambush card. So now what happens oh is no. we, we sh swap maps. Okay. And then um, we're drawing this shape, and then you're going to put a, uh, the monster terrain inside of it. So scary monster head. Okay. I don't know how good my scary monster head drawings are, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll find out soon. Uh, so... Kind of look like bunnies. I mean, bunnies can be scary. <laughs> so, yeah. So notice I put yours in the middle of nowhere, right? So that means each adjacent each adjacent empty space is worth a negative point to you. Oh. You want to reevaluate nah. your, your monster placement, or are you okay? No, because okay. I, I want to make sure you're not getting All those right. points for the the mountain there. Oh well, this does help <laughs> me. It does. Yes. Yeah, so oh, because you could fill it in easier. Fill, right. Ah. I was being generous. Okay, 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 okay. So then this goes away. This is out of the game for you know for the rest of the game, and then the hamlet comes out again. I don't. Know, we saw that as a demo version. So I'm going to take the smaller size. So it needs to be six 
houses arranged in this orientation? Not that specific orientation, just any cluster of six houses that are kind of connected. Diagonally counts too or not? Diagonally does not okay. count. Okay, gotcha. There's no... There's only one car that specific scoring car that asks about diagonals, but in general, everything's ortho. We're in the world of orthogonal, <laughs> right? That's your town name right there, your city name. Yeah, I gotta change it. Is it time to up you can update the the official documents of the city? So now you've got a, a grouping of six or more, so that at the end of round three and four, you would get uh, eight points for that. And then on top of that too, I also filled in my mountain, so I get a coin for that now, right? That's right. Okay. <coughs> and you took the larger shape, is that correct? Yes, I did. Okay. I took the smaller shape, so I got a second coin. So I, I'm at three coins. Okay. So here's the treetop village. And we've got um, forest or village. Okay. And remember, forest, we're looking for them on the edges. Um, and villages, you know, in groups of six or larger. So if you were going to start a, if you were going to put villages down, I would start a new one. I wouldn't connect it to this one. Right, right. Um... Oh, boy. Sure. Dun, dun, dun. Trying to figure out how to count. I can't count right now. Don't worry about me. And so I could still put it over the yep. ruins. Mm -hmm. Just a ruined village. Yeah. We were, you know, civilizations built on top of civilizations there all the time, right? There you go. <laughs> Here's your uh, ruins card. So that the next one is the homestead. So this one has to be on the ruins, and it can be <sighs> house or farm. Just did that, too. <laughs> okay, so I want to do that, I think. Great. Cool. Two, four, that's five. Uh, so here's the Rift Lands card. So this means you can just draw, fill in any one space with any terrain type. So it can be forest, oh. village, uh, farm, water, or monster if, if you so choose. Okay. Um, now, is there a reason why you would want monster? There is one. There's a, there's a scoring card, like a village card, that's looking for lots of different terrain types around it, mm -hmm. uh, which if you, you, know, if you need... Uh, you, know, you could legitimately pick the monster uh, for that if you wanted to. Okay. And then, you know, for stuff down the road, say you were going to put out more cards that are related to these things, you want to have the freedom to, to do that, right? So I haven't, I don't know what I want to do with my life. Oh, and this doesn't count for any time then. Right. That's that interesting. Was, that <coughs> was, uh, we're going to just put it, we're going to just put a little lake over here. Pretty little lake. <laughs> Happy little yeah, lake. yeah, exactly, exactly. So we're at five. Uh, here's six. Forest. Um, so this is like, because this is a, a flip and write game, you can do stuff like this where there's just, where there's shapes that are connected by the diagonal. Whereas in, if we were playing with tiles, you wouldn't be able to do that. Right, right. Which is kind of interesting in my opinion. Um, so. We'll and I took the smaller one because I want the coin. Yeah, I grabbed the coin too. So you know, flip the next card. All right, so the next card we're looking at, yeah, Monster Time. Oh, uh, Monster Time. Kobold on. All right. Oh, yeah, so now we pass sheets again, and we draw that shape. Okay. So the thing that's also nice about this game is that, like, you know, uh, you're only limited by the, the number of players is only limited by the number of pencils you have and the number of sheets that you have, right? So, um, you know, in my mind, there's these epic games <coughs> where you're projecting it up on a screen and there's a room of a hundred people, people playing, all playing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the box says, uh, "I'm putting smiley faces on your monsters." Um, <laughs> and so it plays one to one to one to one hundred players. Um, That's awesome. Three, four, five, six. This is probably gonna be the last one, and it is. Um, the hinterland stream. So okay, let's see if I can finish. Our, uh, I guess we're not scoring rows or, rows or columns, so I'm just gonna get some hmm. some water up in here. Oh no, I can't put it where I want to. Right. So as you play the game, you know you'll you get more and more restricted, kind of on where you can play stuff. Right. If you ever get a card that comes out that asks you to 
create a shape that you can't fit on your board, then you always just draw a one by one square. Um, oh, okay. So that is that. Okay. So then. Um, yeah. All right, so then we s would score again yeah. here, right? Well, okay. Might as well, right? So <coughs> we scored this one just like last time, where it's two points for every water next to every mountain and one for every farm next to every, every mountain. And this is a point for every forest next to the edge of your map. Oh, I did not do that at all. <laughs> okay. So my monsters kind of look like Pikachus the way you drew them there. <laughs> two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Sure, 18. I got 17 for my Mage's Valley, and then for the Sentinel Woods, I have four points. And then coins, you get a point for each. Okay. And then you get negative points for each space next to the monster. So oh, so many. Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Negative thirteen. Oh, yeah. my <laughs> lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So in this instance, where there's two monsters that are against the same, it only counts as one. Oh, uh, okay. So there's a, a little bit uh, of reprieve there, but one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, negative twelve. Oh boy! So <laughs> I had twenty points that round, but then it went down to seven points because of the monsters. Yeah, five, ten, I got <coughs> fourteen for me for the round. All so right. that's that's basically how you play. You play through a couple more rounds. The seasons get shorter. So in the fall phase, you're only counting up to seven, and when we get to winter, we're only counting up to six. Okay. Um, and then uh, once you finish off four rounds, you total your score and see who's the best cartographer. Fantastic. Yeah. So this one is uh, MSRP is twenty four ninety five. Um, I'm currently taking pre orders on my website. It'll come out in August. Uh, what's August. website's URL? Uh, www.thunderworksgames.com. Perfect. Um, and then if you pre order it, uh, you also get this free mini expansion. Uh, so check check this out. So these these are ways that you can spend your coins throughout the game. So um, they wounds. basically at the beginning of the game, th there's eight cards. Three of them get get placed in f on the table. And then each season, you're allowed to activate one. So like that one, move silently, doesn't cost you anything. But um, you can draw shapes so it overhangs the side of the, of the map and just don't worry about the parts that are overhanging. Oh. Whereas in uh, Concentrate costs you three gold, and so you, you cross out the gold, which means they're not going to be worth points at the end of the round. But that card lets you draw one of the shapes a second time in, in the turn. Oh, that's cool. Um, so it adds some, some flexibility, you, can, you know, some additional choices. Um, you know, knowledge lets you uh, fill in... Uh, with the village terrain instead of what's out there. So if you're really trying to build up your villages, for example. Um, and this one's, um, you know, it's, this one specifically says there's a certain shape that you have to draw instead of the ones that are out there. So Very cool. And so these are available if you pre-order, I think? If you pre-order, right? okay. you get the mini expansion for free. It'll also be available uh, after release um, for a fee on the Board Game Geek store or on my website as well. But um, as an incentive to, to get your pre-orders in, um, this is an additional piece that you get for free, and you can uh, you can purchase it as a pickup for Gen Con. So if you're there, I'll have copies, and you can just pick your copy up there. You don't have to pay for shipping, mm -hmm. uh, or you can pay for it to be shipped as well. Fantastic. So I know that you brought a few more things over to I talk did. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show you those real quick. Um, dual powers is. Um, here, we'll just we'll clear that out. So Dual Powers is a one to two player game about the Russian Revolution. It, it's a 45 minute game, so it, uh, but it, it has kind of a historical theme. But um, at, uh, it, has a, it has a board you're playing as either the, the Soviets or the, the provincial government of, the, of, the, of Russia in 1917. Mm -hmm. It has an area control basic, basic um, mechanic. Uh, the things that are interesting about it is that there is a, um, there's a calendar element to it. Um, in which, uh, you can see right here, um, there's a calendar element to it, so every time you play a card, it advances the calendar, oh. and certain historical things uh, happen as a result. This character, 
uh, this political figure uh, Trotsky comes out as a result. Um, and then there's, there's certain dates on the 15th and the end of the month. Um, you get a bonus action if you land on those specifically. Um, it's got dual use cards. It has this idea of uh, will of the people. So if you have the will of the people marker, then there's a bunch of neutral units on the board that count for you. And then if, uh, if you lose it, then they count for the other person. Ah. So you're kind of fighting for the will of the people. You're fighting for uh, you know, you're managing the calendar. And then at the end of each round, there's one known uh, region on the board that's going to score. And there's two secret ones that each p player picks. So if I pick the blue region to score, and um, I'm trying to have majority there. You're trying to figure out where I'm trying to score and uh, maybe take that over. And if you end up having control of it, then you're going to get the points for it. Um, so yeah, it's a, f it's a, it's a medium light uh, area control game with a historical theme. It takes about 45 minutes. I think it's great for like a, a lunch hour with, with a buddy. And um, if you're interested in getting into more historical stuff, I think it's a great option. Um, and then the other game that's in the role player tale universe uh, is this game, uh, Lockup which is a, um, it's kind of an area majority game as well. It has, it feels a little bit like um, uh, Stone Age in which you have, uh, but you have workers that have different uh, uh, strengths mm -hmm. and you're putting them in different areas inside this fantasy dungeon. So you play as the bad guys. So you're the gnolls or the, or the goblins or the kobolds and you're, um, you're placing some of your tokens face down and some of them face up, mm -hmm. and then you can place as many as you want in each region, and then uh, they resolve, and depending on how much strength you have there, you'll get a different reward. So if you're looking to really power up your guys, then you want to put a lot of strong guys into the exercise yard, whereas then if you want to kind of recruit some more goons, then you're going to put some more of your guys in the, in the chow hall or whatever. That's pretty um, cool. Yeah, it's got, it's got a really cool theme. Um, it, it's got this interesting idea of suspicion, so the guards are always out there, and there's different. There's a amount of there's a currency called suspicion, and if you uh, have the highest strength in an area, then you're going to gain that suspicion. Which um, if there, you run out of suspicion in the pool, then all the people with suspicion are the people with the most suspicion are going to lose points. So you and you also uh. have you have a lockout. Uh, sorry, a um, lookout character that helps you avoid getting it as well. So um, you're managing your suspicion. You're you're building contraband items. Um, and you are recruiting goons to your crew. So at the end of six rounds, uh, the, the king is going to come and, and award the toughest crew an opportunity to kind of fight for their freedom. So Very cool. Uh, yeah, I like that. It's, it, the one uh, component that's, I think, pretty unique is that it's got uh, tile holders, kind of like... Uh, this is just a prototype, but you can see these... Um, this, you, you've got your tiles and you put them in your tile holder, kind of like a Scrabble tile holder. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And on the back, it's got prison bars and all your characters. <laughs> and, uh, you can see through there. That's awesome. Uh, That's yeah. really cool. So, it's, it's, uh, the artwork's fantastic. Uh, the, the designer is Dan Kordonsky. He's, he's known, well known for like Dice Hospital, and, and he's got a couple other titles coming out this year uh, Rurik Don of Kiev. Um, so, yeah. That's what's going on in the world of Thunderworks. Fantastic. So where can our viewers find more information about both Lockup and Dual Powers, uh, as well as cartographers? Uh, yeah, uh, www.thunderworksgames is a great place to go. I've got information about all, the, uh, all my different games coming out. Um, and then also you can, act, you can find me on Twitter at, uh, at ThunderworksGAM. Uh, the, I ran out of characters on that one. So <laughs> Thunderworks Gam. Gam, yeah. And, then, uh, and I'm also on Facebook and stuff. So I'm, I'm, pretty, uh, I'm pretty easy to find online, I would say. Um, and obviously, anybody's. I'm pretty good about getting back to people and, and pretty approachable. So, all right, sounds yeah, good. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, appreciate really it. Really do appreciate it. And thank all of you for watching at home. Uh, stay tuned for as we bring you more coverage throughout the day and week here at Gamma 2019. But for now, signing off. I'm Matt. Have a good one, everyone. See you guys.